I pre-ordered the Pixel 8 on the 4th of October 2023, which was the day it was officially unveiled, and it arrived on the 12th of October. So I've now been using this phone every single day for just about 6 months. In this video, I want to break down my experience of using it, covering what I like and some of the problems I've encountered. This review may come across as focusing more on the negatives, but that's because I want to highlight anything that could be a potential deal breaker for you if you're considering buying this phone. I previously reviewed this phone after 1 month of using it, so I'm not going to spend too much time on anything I've already covered in that review, which I'll link up here if you want to watch that first. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with the physical phone itself. I actually love the Pixel 8's design. The camera visor really differentiates the design from other phones on the market. I also love the brushed aluminium metal on the sides and visor because this doesn't show fingerprints super easily. However, as I've mentioned in previous videos, if you rock your phone without a case, then the glass back on the Pixel 8 practically sucks your fingerprints onto it. It's pretty brutal. That's why I picked up Google's official Pixel 8 case on day one, and it's held up extremely well, even after six months. It works really well to protect the phone without adding too much bulk to it. There's a small raised ridge around the screen, so it's harder for you to scratch the screen if you put the phone face down. And there is another raised ridge around the camera visor, also protecting this from surface scratches. Due to this, my Pixel 8 is in near perfect condition since the day I got it, despite the odd drop here and there. Finally, in terms of physical design, I love the size of this phone. For me, the screen at 6.2 inches is small enough to reach everything with one hand, but big enough to make watching videos and playing games enjoyable. Plus, the Pixel 8 screen is excellent in my opinion. It gets bright enough to see even in the brightest sunshine, and the 120Hz keeps it everything feeling smooth and fast. Next, let's move on to the camera. As we've come to expect with Pixel phones, the camera on the Pixel 8 produces consistently pleasing photos, both in good lighting and in low light, and I rarely take a photo on this camera that I'm not happy with. You are missing the extra manual settings that you get on the Pixel 8 Pro, but I honestly haven't felt I've missed this, at least for taking photos on the Pixel 8. If I want to take a photo where I'm dialing in the settings, I'll tend to use my dedicated mirrorless camera. The video quality out of the Pixel 8 is good enough, although it doesn't really sit on par with something like the iPhone 15 Pro lineup. But then again, those phones are much more expensive. I do find I miss the manual controls when shooting video on this phone, as I like to be able to dial in my shutter speed to get the most natural looking footage, but it can still get you more than acceptable results. I'm planning on making a video about using your Pixel 8 as your standalone YouTube camera in the next month or so, so keep an eye out for that if you're interested, and maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. So while the results from the camera are good, I did encounter one major issue, which has lasted for a few months, but may have been improved recently with a software update. Near the start of 2024, I opened up the camera app and noticed that the camera was way out of focus and wouldn't focus even when I tapped on the screen to focus it. I found that the way to get the camera to focus was to point it at something quite far away, after which it would focus fine. This whole process could take two, three, or even four seconds before the camera was usable and in focus. This is something that only started happening at the start of 2024, but was completely fine before then. I can't tell for certain if this this is a software or hardware issue, but there was no obvious drop or impact on the phone that I'm aware of which could have caused the hardware to malfunction like this, which is why I suspect it might have been caused by a software update. This may have been improved in a recent software update that I received in mid-March, as it doesn't seem to be quite as delayed to focus after opening the camera app up. However, it is still almost always out of focus initially, but just doesn't seem to take as long to fix itself now. However, there's no doubt that this could be a deal breaker for someone who buys this phone and has the same issue, because it means you can struggle to capture those fleeting and sometimes unique moments with your phone's camera. If I have any more updates about this issue after I've released this video, then I'll make a note of this in the comments below. But if you're also a Pixel 8 owner and encountering this issue, then please let me know by dropping me a comment down below. Moving on to general performance, the Pixel 8 is powered by Google's Tensor 3 chip. The majority of the time, the phone runs nice and smoothly with no issues. However, I encountered a couple of what I think are software glitches rather than performance issues that I have to mention. I haven't noticed these issues for a couple of weeks since the latest software update, which suggests they may have been patched. However, I still need to mention them here as they were annoying issues that I had to deal with for months. Bear in mind, these are not things that only happened once or twice, but things that have happened frequently enough for me to notice them and take note of them. Firstly, for a while, there were many times where I would go back into an app that I'd already had open and it would be completely unresponsive for no apparent reason. I'd give it about 10 seconds of swiping and pressing buttons without any response before I'd close the app completely by swiping up from the bottom of the screen 
and open it up again and then it would work completely fine. But this was really annoying and happened fairly regularly without any obvious reason for it to happen. The second issue seemed to stem from the same scenario, where I'd open up an app that I'd recently been using, so it should have been held in RAM ready for me to use again, and the app would load seemingly infinitely without ever actually finishing loading. I could sit there for an entire minute or longer and the app would just never load. When this would happen in an app, I would go to refresh the social feed or data within the app and these things would just refuse to load. Again, the solution I found for this was to close down the app completely and open it up again and then it would load completely fine. This definitely wasn't an internet issue as that's always the first thing I would check and I would more often than not have full Wi-Fi or 5G almost every time this happened. The reason I'm highlighting these issues is because this seems to be the real world experience of using a Pixel phone. If you've watched any of my previous videos on this phone, you'll know that I had some other issues in the first month of using it, such as the camera app resetting itself randomly and the phone randomly restarting for no apparent reason. Both these issues have disappeared since that video. But as Google fixed one issue, another one would seem to arise. None of these issues are deal breakers for me, to be honest, but it is important for you to consider that you might encounter issues like this on your Pixel journey, where with something like an iPhone, for example, if it's anything like my experience with my iPad, these kind of bugs and issues are few and far between. Coming back to the performance, the phone can run warm, particularly when you're doing more intensive tasks like streaming 4K video over 5G with Bluetooth audio connected or gaming for extended periods of time. But it's never overheated on me. Overall, despite the little bugs here and there, I honestly really enjoy the stock Android experience on the Pixel, from the way it looks to how simple and intuitive everything feels. The next thing we have to mention is AI, because you can't seem to talk about the Pixel 8 without mentioning AI. The first thing to highlight here is that I basically use none of the AI features on this phone. All of the useful AI features that I'd want to use are either limited to the Pixel 8 Pro or are limited to being available in the US only. These in my eyes are the web page summarizing feature, the recorder app summarizing feature, and the addition of Gemini alongside Google Assistant. This is a much bigger conversation and a huge reason why you need to consider the Pixel 8 completely differently if you're in a non-US country, because you miss out on a huge amount of features, which is pretty ridiculous to be honest. I'll discuss this in more detail in this video. Just a quick note here though, while the Gemini app isn't officially available in the UK, you can download it via APK Mirror and it seems to work pretty well if you want to try it out. One thing I've used this for already is as an alternative way to summarize a web page, as you can ask it to do this for you and it actually probably works better than the official web page summarizing feature as that seems to be limited to only a few bullet points. Continuing on the AI features of this phone, I haven't used a single one of the AI photo editing features such as Magic Editor since I was testing these out on the phone shortly after I got it. I honestly just haven't found a single need or reason to want to use these features, although when I was testing them, they worked pretty well in my experience, despite having quite long loading times. I'd say this is probably a compliment to the Pixel 8's camera, as if I take a photo with this phone, I tend to post it to social media without any editing, because the results straight from the camera are usually really good. You may get more use out of the AI camera features if you like to edit your phone photos more than I do, but as I've mentioned in my previous videos, I tend to use Photoshop and Lightroom for editing my photos and I really enjoy that process. In terms of Pixel and Android features that I've been using a lot, I still find the read aloud and simplify page features to be super valuable to me when I'm reading articles online. These are two features that have worked consistently well for me on the Pixel 8 and I've not really got anything bad to say about them. Continuing on that theme, the focus and bedtime modes on the Pixel 8 are features that I use every day that work really well to limit distractions at work and to stop notifications coming through when I'm ready to sleep. These are digital well-being features that ensure that I'm not glued to my phone all day, which I really appreciate. However, one feature that you may get mixed results from is the optical fingerprint reader, which started out being really reliable, but began to be pretty inaccurate on my right thumb seemingly. However, after removing and re-adding my thumb fingerprint on the phone, it's become a lot more accurate again, which is quite an easy fix. I'm not entirely sure what caused it to get worse over time, but maybe my fingerprint changed over the last six months? It definitely doesn't work well with damp hands and equally doesn't work well with super dry hands. However, as long as you've got those sweet as perfectly oiled hands, you'll be good to go. Moving on, and battery life could be better on the Pixel 8. It's not bad by any stretch, but I'd say it's hovering somewhere between mediocre and good. It tends to get me through a standard day with somewhere between 20 and 30% left. Apart from on days where I'm using the phone for more intensive tasks like maps navigation while streaming music over mobile data, for example. On those more intense use days, I'll probably get to the end of the day with like 10% or less battery remaining. 
I think we are all still dreaming of the day where there's a breakthrough in battery tech and we get a week of battery life out of a smartphone, but that still feels so far away with something like the Pixel 8. I found the biggest drains to be any CPU intensive tasks such as using the camera, along with using mobile data for an extended period of time, and finally using the Spotify app, which is just a pure power leech seemingly. Unfortunately for me, Spotify is one of my most used apps, so there isn't too much I can do about that other than hope that they can improve the efficiency of their Android app. However, in using mobile data, I found that limiting the modem to using 4G only does seem to improve the battery performance a fair amount. And I know people will say, what is the point of having 5G if you can't use it? But I haven't really noticed a useful difference between 5G and 4G speeds, at least where I live for the tasks that I use it for. So music streaming, watching YouTube videos on the go, or downloading podcasts. I find myself getting to the end of the day with a decent amount more battery life than when I've had 5G activated. My battery performance on this phone hasn't significantly changed since my one month review though, and I go into a bit more depth on the battery performance in that video, so I would check that out if you haven't seen it already. The last thing I've got to mention here is the competition and the price, because this may be the decider for a lot of people, and is a significant factor for the Pixel 8 specifically. The main competition for this phone in my eyes are the Samsung Galaxy S24 and the iPhone 15, as they're a similar size and they share similar features. The Pixel 8 retails at £699 or US dollars while both the S24 and iPhone 15 start at £799 or 799 US dollars. This is so important because the Pixel 8 has 90% plus of the features of both of these phones and even beats them out in some areas, but undercuts them by $100. And that's before you consider trade-in offers and discounts, which Google frequently offers for the Pixel 8. Coming back to the features for a second, while the iPhone 15 benefits from features such as being part of the Apple ecosystem, iOS stability, and the longevity and reliability of being an Apple device, it is stuck with a 60 hertz display which I don't think I could personally go back to at this point. The S24, on the other hand, has the benefit of an extra telephoto camera and an excellent screen. Although the screen on the Pixel 8 in my eyes is honestly fantastic too. But you get one UI instead of stock Android, which still contains a fair amount of Samsung bloatware. Now let's look at the reality of the price. And let's assume you have a phone that is now a few years old, such as the Samsung Galaxy S21. In this case, you're looking to upgrade, you're going to trade in your S21, and you're considering buying one of these three phones. First off, Apple rarely offers large discounts on their iPhones, especially not for the current generation of phones. So the chances are you'll be paying the full £799 price. Then if you want to trade in your S21 to pay towards getting the iPhone, you won't be able to because Apple only lets you trade in other iPhones. So the chances are you're going to be paying full price for an iPhone 15. For the Samsung S24, it was only released at the start of this year, so it hasn't really seen any discounts yet. So you're likely to be paying £799 before trading. If you traded in the S21 in good condition, Samsung would offer you £160 off, making the final price £640. But the Pixel 8 is where it gets interesting. Google seems to offer discounts for their Pixel phones way more frequently than either Samsung or Apple. Google also has better trade-in deals, so it would offer £190 for your same S21, meaning the final price of the Pixel 8 would only be £410, which is around 59% off the original price and nearly half the price of the iPhone 15. This is just an example, of course, and the price might be different depending on the country you live in and when you're looking at this. But it shows that you can get an insane deal on the Pixel 8 if you time it right with their discounts, which are fairly frequent. To me, I'd take the huge saving and get a Pixel 8 if I had a two or three year old phone and was looking to upgrade but that's just my opinion. My overall experience with the Pixel 8, despite encountering some strange glitches and bugs along the way, has been largely positive. As I mentioned at the start, I wanted to mainly focus on any issues I had with this phone because if you're looking to buy the Pixel 8, these are the things that you need to know. And like I said throughout the review, fundamentally, the battery life is good enough. The software experience is generally very smooth. The results from the camera are generally really good. And all of the features that I use frequently, they are really useful. However, I can't neglect the fact that you are missing a ton of features on this phone if you're based outside the US. And issues like the camera focus glitch could be an issue for you if you get this phone and encounter the same thing. Fundamentally, I can't recommend you buy this phone if you frequently rely on your phone's camera to capture fleeting moments in your day-to-day -day life, and you should only buy it if you're happy with the features that are available to you right now in this phone. 
If you're based outside the US, definitely don't buy the Pixel 8 expecting that you'll eventually get some of the features that are currently exclusive to the US because users outside that region may never get access to these. But what are your thoughts on the Pixel 8? Do you think the positives of this phone outweigh the negatives? I'll happily be using this phone for a while yet, provided I don't decide to buy another phone to review. I've left a link in the description if you want to pick up the Pixel 8 or the official case from Google. As I've mentioned already, I would definitely recommend you check out my one month review of the Pixel 8 next, as there are some aspects of this phone that I've covered in that review and not in this one. Just click or tap on it right here. Otherwise, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.